This is the message for Moore's Chapel for Sunday, February 11th, 2018. In whom do you trust? Scripture this morning is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. And uh, when I got this from Dana this week, I immediately thought of three, five, and six, which everybody knows, but I thought, well, I don't really know one through four. So anyhow, random thought. Proverbs 3, one through six, where God's word says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Would you pray with me please? Father God, give us a few moments this morning to pause and to reflect and to listen. Listen for your presence in our individual lives, in our individual spirits, to listen for your direction, to listen for who and what you would have us to be, both for ourselves and for others, and most of all, for you. Thank you, God, for Pastor Laurie and for giving her your words to share with us this morning that we could go away with a better understanding of your presence in our lives. I ask that you would give her clarity of thought and of speech and of delivery so that nothing is missed that you would have us receive this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The Burns Family Circle of Trust. Well, we would be talking a little bit about that in a little partway through the message. Anyway, good morning, church family. My name is Lori Brown, and I'm the pastor here at Moore's Chapel. The book of Proverbs that Harvey read from is filled with wisdom in the form of many short, concise sayings that capture our attention and are easy to remember. King Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, is attributed as the author. Now, a proverb is defined as truth condensed into a few words stated in a memorable fashion with application to a variety of situations in life. They typically have word pictures that grab our attention and come alive as we meditate on them. They give comfort to our souls, especially when we're going through tough and trying times. So our main focus today will be answering the question, in whom do we trust? Or in what do we trust? Before we answer that question, let's consider our scripture for today. One of the great things about um, scripture just in general is that we can personalize it when we read it, especially when it speaks directly to us, providing encouragement for our souls. So, for example, today's scripture says, my son, do not forget my teaching. Well, I can personalize that, and I can say, my daughter, do not forget my teaching, or Lori, do not forget my teaching. You can do the same thing. You can put your name in it. You can personalize the scripture. And this scripture is representative of a father talking to a son. The message contained is true for humanity, both men and women. So we can imagine, also imagine, this to be a message from God, our Father, to his children, you and I. So for today, I'm going to personalize it for all of us. 
So, my sons and daughters, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. The Hebrew word for teaching in this passage is Torah, which refers to the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, also known as the law in the Old Testament. There's a lot of good stuff in those books. They were part of the schooling curriculum for the Israelites. Children were required to memorize them. Can you imagine memorizing five books of the Bible and those five, especially Leviticus? What a, that just must have been incredible. For us, though, we are not only to know God's teaching in our minds, right? It's just not about having it in our minds, but we're to have it in our hearts. It's one thing to know something, and it's totally different to have it in our heart. It takes on a different meaning. When we have something in our heart, it becomes part of us. We live it. Memorizing scripture is a great way to have it move from our head to our heart. Memorizing helps us internalize God's word for our life. So in one of my classes in seminary called Biblical Storytelling, we had to memorize a section of the Bible. I don't know why, but I chose Revelation chapter 5, and I memorized it one verse at a time. Now, the process of memorizing it got it into me a whole new way that reading alone um, just cannot do. It required the use of many senses, including my imagination, my hearing, my sight, and repetition, repeating it out loud over and over until it got into my very bones. Um, as I got it, it like came to life. There were parts of it that I really got really excited about, especially when all the animals and every creature on earth was praising God. I just thought, that was so funny. I just can't imagine my cat like, ah, you know. Um, but I noticed things that just weren't evident and wouldn't have been evident by reading alone. So memorizing scripture transforms us in a way that um, reading cannot a question for all of us is, when was the last time we memorized a scripture or a section? I see some heads like, mm -mm, haven't done that. <laughs> it, it would certainly be a good, uh, good thing to do, maybe take one verse and do that this week. So this verse tells us that result, the result of having God's commands in our heart is that our lives will be prolonged and we will have peace and prosperity. In this process, we come to know that God's ways are better than our ways. <clears throat> it doesn't take a whole lot of common sense to quickly figure that out. I don't know how many times you, somebody might have said to you, gosh, I never thought I was going to make it to 50 because of the way that they were living in their younger years, right? So when we live by God's ways and let, allow his truth, you know, it really does prolong our lives. But we have to be careful, however, not to define these words in the world's terms um, because they are different for each and every one of us. The next verse tells us to let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. So the Hebrew word for love in verse 3 is chesed, which means a loyal type of love over time. So this is not based on our feelings. It's the kind of love that is unconditional, but it's in it for the long haul. When chesed is used to refer to God's love, it's related to his compassion through time, highlighting God's covenantal nature. So when we invite Jesus into our hearts, we actually become grafted into God's covenantal promises that were made years ago through Abraham. Now, I love the imagery of binding love and faithfulness around our neck. Love and faithfulness are something we're supposed to wear every day, like a scarf or a tie. 
The more we put love and faithfulness on day after day, the more these things become written on our hearts. They become, again, part of who we are. So when we wear them, we win favor for, with both God and people. That's the result of living the practice. So if we bind that around our neck this week, love and faithfulness, um, I, I imagine we'll all have a better week. And not only that, but we'll gain favor with God and, and others. The next portion of today's scripture is one that has helped me and countless others tremendously over the years. Actually, I saw a statistic that it's like the, one of the top five verses that people just know. Um, I have it hanging in my bathroom, and it continues to provide me strength and encouragement from God on a regular basis. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight so it's easy i believe to say we trust in god especially when everything is going well but much harder when the going gets tough now we all struggle from time to time it's really it's part of being human honestly i still regularly struggle over things every single week that challenge me to trust and lean on God. I suspect that many of us do as well. See, trusting God means relying and counting more on God's strength and power than our own. If we don't need to rely and count on God throughout our day, then our trust as believers has become misplaced. When we trust and lean more on our own strength, our health, our finances, our looks, our ability, and resources more than God, then our trust has become misplaced. If we rely and lean more on our own ideas, our own problem solving and ingenuity and intellect more than God, our trust has become misplaced. So where do you place your trust? Where have you misplaced your trust recently? So in the Meet the Parents movie clip we saw earlier, we heard about the Burns family circle of trust. I like the imagery invoked by it, the analogy, that we can either be in or out of the circle of trust, depending on the choices and our ways. I'd like us to consider that the most important circle of trust that we want to be in is the Lord's. Whenever we trust in anything, whenever we trust in anything in our hearts more than the Lord, kind of those things I mentioned, our intellect, resources, other people, etc., we step out of God's circle and into our own or into somebody else's circle. Whenever we do that, we step into sinking sand. So as believers, when we trust more on those things than on God, imagine yourself stepping out of God's circle of trust. Trusting and leaning on God, however, does not mean we don't use our natural abilities, our resources, our talents, and all those other things we mentioned, because we do use them. But instead, the difference is, is instead we offer them to God in whom we put our trust. So this scripture reminds us to put our trust in the Lord, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God who spoke each and every one of us into being, God who promises that he will never leave us or forsake us never the most high god who loved all humanity so much that he came down in human flesh so that we could have life and have it abundantly god father son and holy spirit who is the one that blew the very breath of life into each and every one of us the lord our helper our healer our deliverer our provider who desires nothing more but to have an intimate personal relationship with each and every one of us you know, we are reminded to trust the Lord 
with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding. Our human understanding is limited and it's flawed. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12, New King James Version reminds us, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am. See, when Paul wrote this verse, mirrors weren't like they are today. They were made of like a polished metal. It, like Just imagine this being a polished metal and you, you won't be able to see the reflection very clearly. So that's what they provided, a dim reflection of our reality. That's kind of like our understanding is at times compared to God's understanding. So it doesn't mean we don't use our understanding. The scripture says we're not to lean on it. In our human flesh, the natural world, we have five senses. We have hearing, seeing, touch, taste, and smell. When we invite Jesus into our hearts to be our personal Lord and Savior, we are born of water, kind of in the natural way, and also of the Spirit. We're new creations in Christ. We're no longer our own. Our bodies become a temple for the Holy Spirit who now lives in each and every one of us. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. We become carriers of the kingdom of God wherever we go. So as people who have been born of the Spirit, we also have spiritual senses as well. We have spiritual ears and eyes that can see and hear what God is doing and saying. We can feel God's unseen presence in us and in our midst. I've felt God's presence in here this morning. I don't know how many of you, you know, but I have felt God's presence in here this morning. As we learn to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, we learn to start relying less on our human senses and more on our spiritual senses. It takes trust in the Lord to step out in faith to be and do what God is calling us to do. The problem is, is in our humanity, most people like to be in control, right? Do we have any control freaks in here? Just a few of us who want to admit it. See, when we're in control, we can become our own, and I'm so guilty of this, we can become our own self-reliant, independent little G gods who run the show instead of God. Have you ever been there? Now, here's the thing. God never intended us to rule over one another. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, God blessed Adam and Eve, and he tells them to be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, to rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. We were never told to rule, control, or dominate one another. Never. When we become believers in Christ, our spiritual connection with God is restored. Jesus becomes not only our Savior, but our Lord the one we get our marching orders from. When Jesus becomes our Lord, we surrender our will and we take on his. We are no longer our own, but God's. We give up control to him. In Pastor Craig Green's book, Conquering the Game of Control, he talks about three basic ways that control operates in our lives when we do not trust in the Lord. We control by dominating, intimidating, and manipulating the people and events and around us. Some ugly stuff. And, you know, according to his book, and I, and I believe this, we all revert to one of these, is our kind of like our go-to. Domination, intimidation, or manipulation. When we are in control, or, or take that control. 
When any of these are operating in our lives, it's a sure sign that we are not trusting the Lord with all of our heart. We've stepped out of the circle of trust. We've stepped out of God's circle of trust. As believers in Christ, we're called to give up the control and submit ourselves to Jesus' lordship. And as we do that, we start to learn how to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding. The last part of this verse tells us, in all your ways, submit to him, Jesus, and he will make our path straight. As we learn to submit all of our ways, this means our living, our conduct, our habits, how we speak to each other, how we treat one another. We submit all of our ways to Jesus, and he will make our path straight. In other words, Jesus will keep us from wandering. So as we close, let's listen to these verses again and take them in. My sons and daughters, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Applying and living these verses takes faith and it takes daily practice. When we're faced with particularly challenging things related to unforeseen events in our lives, our health, our children, our finances, our world, um, I find it helpful to turn those things over to God as well. Not easy all the time, but certainly helpful. First Peter, verse five, chapter five, verse seven, tells us to cast our anxiety on him, anxiety on him because he cares for us. So one way to practically apply this to our lives is for us to give whatever we're concerned about to God and trust him with all our heart. We cast it on God who can handle whatever we give him. He's a really big God. He can handle whatever we give him. You know, I know this is easier to say than do. Um, I know in, in particular this week, I've, I've had a, a couple concerns in my heart with my children, and I want to get in there. I want to try to control the situation. And I've had, I've had to like literally say, Lord, I trust in you. I trust you with my kids. I give them to you. I know that you love them more than, than I do. And, and I just, I give them to you. And I keep saying it over and over until I believe and trust in my heart that God will care for them way better than I can even imagine. Um, see, when we do this, we become free to live the best we can because we're not overcome them by worrying and manipulating and plotting and, you know, doing all these other things that we do uh, when we get uncomfortable and afraid. So when we do this, we become free to live the best lives we can, making the most of every opportunity that God places before us. God places opportunities before us each and every day. And it's during these times when we're trusting in the Lord with all of our heart and leaning not on our own understanding that we typically find joy in the most unexpected places. I know that happened to me earlier this week. Um, you know, honestly, God wasn't even giving me this message <laughs> during the week. And I was like, God, please, you got to give me a, a word to speak on Sunday. And, um, and it was like, you know, don't worry about it. You need to go here and do this and do that and call this person, da, 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 da. Finally, it started to come on Friday. And I didn't finish till like last night. But anyway, thank you, God, uh, for
for never delivering, never, you, you, he's always on time. So in whom do you trust? Let's pray. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we love you so much. Lord, help us, each and every one of us, take uh, deeper steps of trust with uh, the things, the burdens that we carry, the weights. Um, We cast them all up to you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for each and every single person in here, and I pray that you would um, just continue to touch them in a very special way. Let them know in the core of their being that you are the one. You are the one that they can trust with anything and everything. We thank you, Lord, that you came to earth to show us how to live. And Lord, we just pray for your help. Open our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening to the message. We are located at 392 Blake Road, off Blue Ball Road in Elkton, Maryland. Service times are 8.30 and 11 a.m. For more information, please visit www.morrischapel.org.